The Good State Navigator Grid. This is an overview of the Good State Navigator Grid. A navigator is the person responsible for navigation, in this case, the navigation of challenging relationships. Navigators are primarily concerned with position, self awareness in your environment, and directions to get to your destination, your vision, and your specific goals. Navigators use maps to orient themselves to the journey and tools such as compasses for direction. The Good State Navigator Grid is a tool to orient both your awareness and strategies expressed as specific tools for you to take full responsibility for your 100% of the 50% of the relationship. The top half of the grid focuses on your awareness of challenges in relation to your ideal, a good state. The bottom half focuses on tools you can employ on your own and at your own initiative and constitute directions to maintain a good state. The Good State Navigator Grid is really like a super tool that gives perspective on which specific tools you can use to maintain a good state as a confident navigator of life's relationship challenges. It provides orientation to your quest to gain unconscious competence in the realm of relationship challenges. It allows for peace of mind. Being in a good state supports your primary role, namely to be an emotionally intelligent navigator of challenging relationships. Each of the five elements of a good state, namely of mind, body, emotion, spirit, and navigation, will be explored comprehensively in independent videos. If we are motivated to have peace with peace of mind, and we know our quest starts with ourselves, then what is the best way to show up for our relationship challenges? Ideally, we are in a good state. We have focused attention, a relaxed presence, calm energy, an authentic intention, and we have made a conscious choice. When we are in a good state, we are able to be the conscious navigator of our peaceful lives, despite the reality of relationship challenges. We already know from our exploration of the five lacks that the lack of awareness of our body, our emotions, our mind, and our spirit is a huge challenge to overcome. What you are now going to discover in the Good State Navigator Grid are the best tools for maintaining a good state. Here's the tool, but where did it come from and what does it do? We start with the mind and your thoughts. As the late Wayne Dwyer would say, your behavior is based on your thoughts. So the thing to work on is those things inside your consciousness that we call thoughts. From the mind we go to the body and your sensations the literal physical sensations of our body that we bring into our awareness. And from the body, we go to the emotions and feel the energy that moves us, really energy in motion. To that we bear our spirit, or whatever represents our highest power, and find meaningful answers to the deeper questions about life and its purposes. When we align mind with body, with emotion and spirit, we position ourselves to navigate the reality of our life and consciously choose our wise direction. The quality of the mind we seek from ourselves in navigating our challenges is focus. We want the capacity of focused attention. The quality of the body we seek from ourselves is relaxation. We are here, present and relaxed. Relaxed presence. The quality of emotions is calmness. Our energy is calm, not aroused, not agitated, calm energy. And authenticity, being real and true to yourself, is the quality we seek in spirit. We want to be motivated by an authentic intention. The somewhat elusive state of being conscious is the quality we seek in our navigation. We want conscious choices to inform our navigation strategy. However, there are challenges. Our minds make judgments about the world and get it wrong. Our bodies experience stress, some good but mostly bad, especially when ongoing and chronic. Our emotions can be unruly, whether in eruption or their suppression. And when our spirit is devoid of meaning, we identify as sad and helpless victims. And when we are not in a good mental, physical, emotional or spiritual state, then we have limited capacity for conscious action. We end up acting on autopilot, in other words, non-consciously. Fortunately, there are remedies to these challenges. 
When we subject our judgments to greater awareness, whether through self-reflection or feedback, we are able to use our attention wisely. When we allow our body to move, whether physically or mentally, we unlock stress. When we acknowledge our emotional energy, we are able to find our inner calm. When we accept our life and in it find meaning, we are no longer victims of circumstance, but life navigators. And when we implement a strategy, we choose a direction that consciously leads to our highest values. So this makes up the first half of the grid, your awareness and orientation to the challenges in relation to your ideal, a good state. You can see the basic proposition or formula with the plus and equal signs here. Here is what emerges. Here are the good state descriptions. Here are the challenges. And here are the remedies to each. Next up are the tools that you use to work on your good state. Each has a variety of tools to consider. When working with the mind and our thoughts, we want to strengthen our capacity to use our focused attention. Meditation is the primary tool for that. But we also have to address the way in which we make sense of the world through our judgments. Our primary judgment is between pleasure and pain. We move towards what we like, pleasure, and away from that which we don't like, pain. Toward and away awareness provides basic information for you to consider as you navigate. Another awareness tool focuses on habit identification and review. Of course, openness to 360 degree feedback is non-negotiable when it comes to awareness and a rich source of insight, especially given the reality of blind spots. The ladder of inference, which includes the left hand and right hand column exercise from Peter Senge, is well suited to reveal how it is that we make sense of the world. The ladder of inference and left hand right hand column exercise reveal how your beliefs, as in judgments about the world, influence your evaluations of what you observe. Finally, Byron Katie's turnaround process is excellent for working on our projections. These then are the tools for our focused attention of mind. Moving to the body and stress management tools that support relaxation and presence. Fundamentally, our stress response is linked to movement, in other words, activity. Any exercise, it can be physical, but also mental, which is why visualization is included. But most important of all is breath. Nothing compares, and I encourage you to take breathing on as a conscious life practice. Other standard techniques like progressive muscle relaxation and the newer Wonder Woman technique are considered. Finally, practices like Qigong and yoga always deserve inclusion as preventative tools. These are the tools for relaxed presence. When it comes to emotions, we start with self-acknowledgement of our feeling states, especially those that may challenge us using the name it to tame it approach Dr. Rock advocates. We can also give ourselves self-empathy. We can reappraise our emotional response or intensity. And we can integrate and heal emotional charge from our traumatic pasts. One specific way is called tapping, also called the emotional freedom technique. It blends traditional wisdom about meridian energy channels with modern psychology to offer amazing benefits. And whether or not one expresses oneself to our other, the benefit of contemplating an I statement is invaluable. Again, the summary of tools for emotions. With spirit, our focus is on the meaningful acceptance of what is, notwithstanding our authentic intention for another outcome. Forgiveness allows the victim narrative to be replaced with that of empowered navigation. But more than that, we need to know what it is that we value, what our life purpose is, and where we are planning to go. Accordingly, vision, mission, and value statement identification and articulation is sensible. When it comes to navigation, our primary directional tools include choosing which of the five conflict handling strategies makes sense. Another is a specific approach called the SBAR assertion tool. A helpful philosophical orientation and deed practical process is appreciative inquiry. It's premised on the idea that what we put our attention on grows. It offers a way to focus on the positive. We sometimes need to say no. Knowing how to navigate this is key. At a very practical level, knowing how to evaluate any, but especially written communication through the lens of positivity is very helpful, especially given how we tend to infer negativity more through online text 
communication like email and the ultimate which ideally informs your fundamental approach to navigating challenges is the six-step peace path it provides clear guidance to a structured approach that facilitates your peace with peace of mind so there we have it not in depth but a description nonetheless of the elements of the grid with its two parts awareness and tools the basic premise is that if you are in a good state you're in a good position to navigate your life challenges ideally in a good state we have focused attention relaxed presence calm energy an authentic intention and have made a conscious choice in subsequent videos we go in depth to flesh out what a good state means as an ideal in respect of mind body emotion spirit and navigation each of the tools will be defined and contextualized with a view to application to the good state navigator grid being all it can be for your peace with peace of mind thank you